Hello there. So my name is Mwai Lungu and today I'm going to be explaining how to service a compressor from an ASF concentrator. So the model that I'll be working on today is a 2660 model that is commonly found in ASAP and uh, the VOB 515 concentrators. So there are multiple models of compressors and uh, the process of servicing them is pretty much the same. So just make sure that you have uh, the right tools uh, for the screws on that particular model. So in order to check if the compressor is performing at its best or not, uh, there are steps that we take in order to check for the performance and we are going to talk about that in one of our upcoming videos. So in order to service the compressor, you need to have the right tools and uh, the replacement service kits. So the tools that you need include a small flat screwdriver. So we use this one to remove uh, the old head gasket and the o-ring from uh, the compressor. And then secondly, we have uh, the T25 top tip. So we use this one to unscrew some of the screws on the compressor and then we also have the T27 Torx tip so we also use this uh, to unscrew uh, some of the screws on the compressor and then we have uh, a ratchet and a 6mm socket so this is the one that we use uh, to hold the tip and then remove the screws uh, from the compressor and then now uh, we have the sharpie so we use the sharpie to mark the compressor so that when we remove the head of the compressor we know which side was facing the front and which side was facing the back um, so i would recommend that you get this red tool box because uh, this one has uh, all the different type of tips that you need the torx the allen key the phillips and the flat so once you get this you will have everything that you need for the replacement service kits, you must have the cylinder sleeve, uh, which is where the compression takes place. Uh, and then uh, you also need uh, the cylinder cap. So the cylinder cap goes inside the cylinder sleeve and is there to provide a tight seal inside the cylinder sleeve during the suction and compression. Then you must have the o-ring. So the o-ring uh, sits between the cylinder sleeve and the valve plate and is there to provide a tight seal um, Then next we have uh, the head gasket. So the head gasket sits between the valve plate and the comp compressor head and then uh, Lastly, we have uh, the four reed valves. So these are responsible for channeling air into the cylinder sleeve during suction and out of uh, the cylinder sleeve during compression uh, so now that we have everything, we can jump on to servicing the compressor. begin with, uh, make sure that you mark the head of the compressor with a sharpie so that you know which side is the front and which one is the back. So make sure you mark the top of the head and the side of the compressor. Right, so after marking the compressor, then you can now move on to removing the head of the compressor so that we gain access to the rest of the component. Uh, so I am using a Torx uh, 25 tip to remove the screws uh, but then the type of screw varies across the different model of uh, compressors that you might come across. So it could be Allen key, it could be flat or Phillips. So just make sure that uh, you have the right tools for the job. So this might take some bit of time.
now lift up the head and then uh, it comes off uh, nicely. Um, so depending on how long the thing has been running, sometimes the valve plate can stick to the top of the, uh, the sleeve, but then uh, you can just uh, pull that out. Uh, so from there now, uh, we'll move on to removing the cylinder cap. So in order to remove the cylinder cap, you need to uh, unscrew the screw on top of uh, the valve plate. So in order to do that, uh, you use a T27 uh, torque stick. Once you remove the screws, you can then now slide out uh, the cylinder sleeve and then you can see that uh, the cup retainer comes out uh, together with uh, the cylinder cup. So you can see uh, the level of damage on the cylinder cup. So this one has been running for a very long time and we can see that the side is almost peeling off on the cylinder cup. So we need to change this. And then uh, we can also see on the other side, it's the same thing, uh, visible damage. Then uh, the side is almost peeling off as well. So, if we also look at the cylinder sleeve, we can also uh, see the wear that we have inside. Um, so, depending on how long uh, the compressor has been running, you can see how much damage uh, has been caused. Right. Uh, so, now uh, we have seen the damage that we have, and we need to replace these components with uh, the new components that we have. So, uh, the first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to press uh, the cups, uh, the cylinder cups inside the cylinder sleeve. So you can see we have the new cylinder sleeves here. Uh, so and then we have uh, the new cylinder cups and the cylinder sleeve as well. So in order to press the cylinder sleeve inside the cylinder, the cylinder cup inside the cylinder sleeve, uh, you need to place the cylinder cup on the cup retainer, and then that will help you to nicely press uh, the cylinder cup inside the cylinder sleeve. So you need to be very careful when doing this uh, because uh, you might risk damaging uh, the cup. So as you can see here, uh, our cylinder uh, cup is now sliding inside the cylinder uh, sleeve. So once you do that, we can now fit it on top of uh, the piston rod and then uh, try to align it. So you can see on the back we have a small notch. So that notch goes uh, on top of the uh, piston rod. So make sure that you align that uh, notch with uh, the hole on the cylinder rod. This takes uh, a bit of time sometimes, but then when you're lucky, it just drops in first time. But then when you push it in, uh, make sure that you try and rotate it so that you can feel that it's uh, nicely tight and has fallen inside the notch. So once that happens, uh, you can now uh, replace the screw back on top. So when replacing the screw, make sure you don't tighten it the first time because you need to check and make sure that uh, the cup retainer is rotating and that it's locked into place. And once you feel that it's nicely locked into place, you can now uh, tighten it up so that it doesn't uh, uh, get loose when the compressor is running. So once you place that in, you can try and rotate it a bit just to see if uh, the uh, piston cup is uh, nicely aligned inside the cylinder sleeve. Alright, so now we move on to the second cylinder sleeve.
Now that uh, we have finished uh, replacing the cylinder sleeves, we can now move on to uh, changing the flapper valves. So, for the flapper valves, um, normally you can actually sometimes see a visible damage on it, uh, but on this one we don't have uh, too much damage, but then uh, it's advised to change the flapper valves each time you service the compressor. So, we are also going to make the changes. So in order to remove the flapper valves, you need a 6mm uh, socket, which is the same one that we use uh, on our ratchet. The flap of our has a washer below it, uh, on top of it, so we just make sure that you keep that safe, don't throw it away because it goes back when you are replacing it with a new one. Okay, so I'll use a flat screwdriver to try and uh, remove this one, it seems it uh, got stuck. Once you remove the flapper valve, you can then uh, take a, a, a dry cloth and then uh, wipe out all the dirt that's, uh, that was around uh, the area where the flapper valve was. So once it's nice and clean, you can now get uh, the new flapper valve and then uh, place it uh, where the old flapper valve was. And then we take our washer again and then place it on top. Make sure that when screwing down the flap above, uh, the washer is nicely aligned with uh, the length of uh, the flap above, and then the flap above also is nicely aligned with uh, where the uh, the used up flap above was. Right, so once you are satisfied uh, with uh, that, you can now move on to the second flap of up, which is uh, below uh, the cup retainer.
once you are satisfied with the other side, uh, you can now move on to uh, changing the flapper valve on uh, the next one. We'll now jump on to changing the head gasket. So if it's easier to remove, you can just remove, peel it off, but then if you're having trouble peeling it off, then you can use a flat screwdriver to uh, remove the head gasket. So we now get the new head gasket and then uh, you put it where we had the old head gasket. So you also do the same for the o-ring but then uh, we examined this one and we saw that uh, we didn't have uh, any damage on the o-ring so we just maintained the same uh, o-ring that was there originally. So after that you can now then place uh, the valve plates uh, on top of uh, the cylinder sleeve. Once you feel that it is in place, you can now uh, place uh, the second uh, valve plate on uh, the other side. Alright, so now that we have uh, our valve plates on top of the compressor, uh, you can just try to rotate the compressor and make sure that everything is rotating nicely while holding down the valve plate and uh, once you are satisfied that everything is okay you can now uh, replace uh, your say, uh, your compressor head back on top of the compressor so remember the markings that we made at the beginning so make sure those markings align with the markings that we made on the side of the compressor so this way uh, you will be sure that you have uh, the right side uh, facing where it's supposed to be facing. So once you replace the uh, uh, compressor head, you can now uh, put the screws back in the original place and then you screw them up. So now uh, we're finished screwing down uh, our compressor and then uh, you can just try to rotate it so that you feel if uh, it's rotating nicely. So you can actually hear a hissing sound when you rotate the compressor. So that tells you that uh, everything now is working perfectly. So um, this was a step-by-step -step process of uh, how to service an air compressor. And uh, as I said at the beginning, the steps are similar across uh, most of the model of compressor that you are going to come across. Uh, so all you need to do is uh, have the right tools uh, that will enable you to successfully uh, make the change of all the components that we need. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and we will see you in our next video tutorial.